You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing Raw Recap from December 11th. Yeah. So, decent show. It was a good show. Um, good bro. Not much going on. Well, no. Progression wise. But the, the quality of the entertainment was good. Yeah. But that's a positive. Well, that and the fact that you still have a month before the next pay-per-view. Months exactly. plus. But, but that means they're able to fill dead space. Yes. Unlike somebody. Yep. Who was having trouble building to a pay-per-view. Yep. <laughs> Which we will get into in our next video. Yeah. However. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, anyway. So uh, <clears throat> we opened with a video package about the tag team match from last week uh, between Cesaro and Sheamus and uh, Dean and Seth. Yes. Um, and then after that short clip, they announced four matches, so single matches for later on tonight. Yeah. We will be seeing, for the first time ever, Dean Ambrose versus Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. Sheamus against Seth Rollins for the 50th yeah. time Never in the last 50 before. weeks. Um, and then... Reigns the, versus Cesaro. Which is a match we haven't seen, mm-hmm. at least not in a while, yeah. for the Intercontinental Championship. Yes. So. And then uh, Kane versus Braun. Strowman. Yes, and th- the, that would... D- 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 determine the number one contender for the universal title the winner will face brock lesnar at the royal rumble weird booking there what the you mean just the way it worked or the idea of having the idea yeah it's like oh crap we got to put him in a title match he signed for this date hmm are you talking about brock no well just putting somebody in a title match against him well yeah but usually well the way they they could have done it many ways that made a lot more sense right like Paul Heyman literally going out there and announcing an opponent would have made more sense. Yeah. That's scary, but that would make more sense than this. Yeah. So open the show. Joe's in the ring. Yes. Talks about the shield, mm-hmm. runs each of them down. Uh, it's it's kind of funny because he was talking about how they're like the most dominant force mm-hmm. and how they took out evolution and um, what was the other team that he talked about? The authority, I guess yeah, they I said. Think he said the authority. I can't. I can't remember. There was another team, and um, oh, maybe he said the Wyatts because they did feud I with guess, the Wyatts. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and and then he says, "But they're no match for me, <laughs> a single entity." Hey, Joe's good at what he does. Eating. He's got competition. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> anyway but yeah he says he's he's not impressed with any of the members of the shield and he goes on about how he's beaten you know roman multiple times mm-hmm. and then tonight he's gonna beat dean ambrose but yeah. he calls out dean uh seth, seth yeah dean seth let me let me run down all the members first yeah roman we will get there eventually yeah just keep on saying names um because Wait. he's has unfinished business yes. and he wants that championship which seems a little surprising based off of the the way he's been acting, because it kind of just seems more like he just wants to beat up Roman more so than wants the, the title well, that he has. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes to beat up Roman. I guess and apparently, a... fun fact we learn, what? that Roman likes to drink orange juice after he brushes his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, somebody in, in the audience made a sign about that on Monday. Yeah. There's a lot of strange signs. Yeah, there like... was one odd one on SmackDown as well, but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, then we get a backstage shot of what was it, Dean? No, no, it was it was Seth watching the TV, and then Dean okay. comes over. He's like, "What's going on?" Right, mm-hmm. and then Seth's like, "Go get Roman." Mm-hmm. And then Joe talks some more, and then Roman's watching the TV with the two of them. He's like, "All right, that's enough." And then he walks to the ramp uh, yep. to the stage, and then he goes out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it was unnecessary. What the to, whole backstage to have before? them yeah. do that is. Uh, it's kind of yeah. funny, but whatever. But you know. So yeah, they get into it, right? Mm-hmm. And then the well, bar. Yeah, I was gonna say Roman just came out and they start fighting, mm-hmm. and then like you said, the, the bar, bar comes coming out, out yep. from the crowd, and uh, and then Roman gets. I guess he, I think Tri- he gets. Well, he gets triple teamed. Yeah. But I think uh, Joe puts the coquina clutch on him. Yes. And that's when. That's when the other two came out and Cesaro and Sheamus left the ring and went after them, right? Yes. Yeah. And then for some reason, well, I guess it doesn't really. It's not really for some reason. But uh, eventually, um, Dean, Seth, and Roman are found in the ring. Mm. Uh, pretty much just. Standing there. 
Yeah. Well, no, they got they got beaten up. Oh, 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 just laying. Oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah the heel stood tall there. Yes, yes, yes so, that's right. Samoa Joe, um, Sheamus, and Cesaro mm-hmm. all did finishing esque moves on the three shield members, and then mm-hmm. they stood tall, and then they left. Yeah, yeah. That was that. Mm-hmm. Then we got Bailey and Mickey versus Paige and Mandy Rose. Yeah, it was an odd pairing because you know, generally speaking, we see Bailey mm-hmm. and Sasha. But Sasha was with them. She just wasn't part of the match for whatever reason. Yeah. Because it was like the leader and a, a lackey versus two lackeys with the leader on the outside and the other team. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Because it would make more sense if Paige wasn't in the match. It was Mandy and... Yeah, uh, well, Sasha took a pinfall last week, so... Well, Somebody I, else's turn this week. Well, I know, but I'm just saying it would make more sense for Paige to not be, be part in the of ring. this match. No, yeah, yeah. But I guess they want, us, they want her to have, uh, I guess just get the feel for being back in the ring so I they guess. have her work more they're just going on a whim here just, well that too they have no idea what stuff at the doing. wall yep so uh but yeah yeah they cut a promo before the match and of course the crowd is not pleased with uh what's her name sonia deville there you go uh, which is unfair Daria, but that was her old name yeah which is not fair because the w- they like before she even opened her mouth, they were ready to what? Yeah, and it's not like anything she said came out poorly. She mm-hmm. was very clear. She was to the point. You know, I, I I'm honestly surprised they're doing it to her and not to Mandy. Yeah, because I kind of feel like Mandy kind of like, if anything, feels like someone who they would not appreciate. Like Eva Marie 2.0. Yeah, exactly. Because that's literally what she is. I know. But she's decent in the ring, so well, yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> she well, because she they learned from Eva mm-hmm. what like, not oh, to do. We should probably put her in matches and have her learn how to wrestle, mm-hmm. despite the fact she had very limited ex- uh, TV Ex- exposure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I don't think she was really shown on TV at all. Maybe once or nope. twice, not to my recollection. And we pretty much watch every NXT, so unless they like dark matches yeah. and stuff. Yep. Um. Anyway, yep. but yeah, they uh they all take their turns talking about how Absolution is the future, mm-hmm. and they're going to take care of the past. Yep, and um, they got the victory here. Not a huge surprise. Yeah, shenanigans um, going on. Well, yeah, what happened was um, I think I want to say it was Mandy and um, Mickey who were illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, Paige attacks Mickey, and then yeah, Mickey Bailey, had a good amount of offense yeah yeah gone. she was in she was in yeah, the ring for a while yeah, yeah um but yeah Paige attacked mickey and then um bailey tried to help her out so she had Paige in a corner ref drags her out of the corner to bring her back to her corner um and that's when Paige kicks uh mickey in the head mandy i guess i don't know what she did i think she just rolled her up yeah maybe and she got the win yeah i think that was it yeah because I, I don't think she did a move. I think she just... Just pinned her? Yeah. Yeah. No, so. that makes sense. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And then we got some more of Bray and Matt Hardy. Yeah. So what they did was, right after the match, they have Bray say, I'm here. Right. And then Matt goes, I'm woken. <laughs> and then they cut to commercial. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe they just wanted to put them on real quick. Yeah. So they come back and they do the back and forth. But every time between when the next person was going to talk, they would have a graphic come up. Yeah. So it was either the woken thing or brain is birds or whatever the yeah. hell he's got going on. So this was like not as bad as, you know, Bray's normal stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. Because... He- there, there was actually direction here. This wasn't him talking at the world. This was him talking to a person. Right, and having someone talk back to him. Yeah, it's true. Because <laughs> usually what happens with his feuds is like, I don't know what you're talking about, man, but I don't like you. Yeah. That's pretty much how his feuds go. So how much longer do you think they're going to do this taped stuff? Um. Well, they still got time before the Rumble. I know, but I feel like they need to... Have at it's, least... it's not going to be every week. Yeah. I think maybe maybe next week will be a really long one, or maybe it'll be a face to face interaction. Yeah, cause I don't know. I feel like well, though, they jumped into it too soon with Bray Wyatt. It's true, but I like, think that's the whole reason why they did it. I know. I know. No, I know. 
but although this would make more sense if neither of them were doing anything for mania yeah i feel like that that would be yeah, a, a right, bigger right. bigger stage for them to yeah showcase um, there although theoretically speaking there's a chance that this could be the start and then maybe there's a small break in between the Rumble and Mania, and then they start again right before Mania. I don't know. Or they'll just take it all the way through, like mm-hmm. uh, like with Orton last year. Yeah, that's true. Whatever. Um, but yeah, the it was pretty much Bray commands the darkness, and Matt has the light, the light. Mm-hmm. and Bray wants to extinguish the light, and... Matt was going on about how Sister Abigail's been around forever. Yes, and and he, he knows her. Yes, mm-hmm. they're friends. But they were they were friends. <laughs> yeah. Now they're not friends nope, because she's she, evil. Yeah. And, she now uh, controls Bray Wyatt. Yes. So, yeah, it's kind of... And then they had this really awkward, long laughing back yeah, and forth. Yeah, the end was That was weird. unnecessary. Because they went back four or five times mm-hmm. just laughing constantly. It was different, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's probably Matt's idea. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, this is a good backstage segment. It's uh, my favorite cruiserweight. I, and mine as well. Drew Gulak, <laughs> Enzo Amore. So uh, Enzo's talk. I mean, Drew's talking about his that he's going to be the number one contender for the cruiserweight championship. And then he's going to be the champion. Well, no, well, yeah, that's what he said he's going to do. Yeah. Um, because, well, he opened with, in case you didn't know, because uh, of the everything that's going on with Rich Swan and how he oh, got dropped right, from right, the, yes. so he's like, there will be a a, a a last chance number one contenders match, and I will face the winner of that, and that's then right, I will win mm-hmm. and face you at, or face you, I guess. Yeah. For the, there was no date. Yeah, it'll probably just be on two hundred five mm-hmm. live in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but it's just his delivery is great. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, I just I. I don't know. I think they're going to run into problems if they try to turn him face. He's going to turn face. I know, but... He's going to win the title. Yeah, but it's He's not going to work. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Yes, it will. No, it There's going to be a 205 Live that's going to be 20 minutes of his PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I cannot wait. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to happen. It's not going to be good. Oh, no, it will. I yeah. mean, it's going to be entertaining, but it it's not going to be good for rating or just viewership. Did you watch 205 last night? I know I you did d- not. You didn't, but trust me. It's good. Anything is better than what they're doing because... Or at least, let me rephrase that. Because last night was good. Mm -hmm. The crowd hated it. So, it doesn't matter what you do. The crowd's not going to like it either way. That's true. So, 20 minutes of his PowerPoint presentation is good for me. That's all I care about. I don't care about those idiots that go and watch it live. Yeah. Fair enough. Damn SmackDown fans. Oh, that's tough. It's, it's, you're going from one show to another. It's true. Yeah. It's dumb. I know. Um, anyway... Uh, but it just based off of what happened last night, it really seems like that's that's the direction going. they're going. Yeah. All right, I'll have to watch it. Oh, I will watch it just at some point. There's a lot of crap yeah. this week. Um, anyway, so Enzo tells Gulak that he needs to be prepared for anybody mm-hmm. because of despite the fact there's only four people in the match, he's got to be prepared for everybody. Right. Oh yeah, because he was like, oh, only one victory, and you think you're on your, the same level as me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at this point, he starts naming off some names, the mm-hmm. four people in the match. And then he says Nia Jax. <laughs> and then Drew Gulak's like, Nia Jax? She's not in the cruiserweight division. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. This is a test. Yeah, you can be, be ready for anybody. And um, then was at, she, did uh, she show up? Yeah, that's when she, uh, she came up. No, 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 on 205. Oh, no. No, no. Because apparently she's going to be refereeing Enzo's matches. That Good. is a rumor. Yes. Really? That's a rumor. Interesting. I guess that, that's kind of funny. Because she's like the stalker now. Mm, I guess. That's fine. Yeah. It gives her something to do. It's true. And it keeps her away from this very potentially damaging thing oh, yeah. going on. They can make world. one wrong move and you're going to screw up a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So keeping her away from the Just women's... Watch SmackDown. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, keeping her away from the women's feud right now is probably the best thing for her. Yep. Um. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Hey, at this point... Oh, hey, no, no, no. She didn't come up. That was later on, I think. No, no. Then she walks up and she she says hi to him. No, that's later. Oh, oh, is that? Yeah, it was twice. Yeah, there was two. This was probably after the match. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, you're right. Wow. Um, Cruiser has got a couple segments. Yeah, and they had a long match. Yeah. So. Oh, um, so then we get 
But yeah, uh, Enzo just tells Gulak that he needs to be prepared for anything. And, okay. Yeah. I thought it was one giant segment no, for no, some no, reason. No. Um, yeah. So up next, we have the over Finn Balor mm. versus the previously injured Curtis Axel. Yes. And he takes off the neck brace right before the match. It's yeah. magically all right. Yep. Well, no, well, it's funny because he came down wearing the neck brace, mm-hmm. and Michael Cole repeats repeatedly says, Curtis Axel is fine. He's cleared to wrestle. I don't know why he's still wearing that neck brace. He said it like three times. Oh, yeah. Um, Got to tune him out. Yeah. As they're coming down, um, we have Curtis Axel and um, Bo Dallas both mocking Finn's entrance, which was strange. Yeah. Because I don't think we've ever seen them do that before. No. So that's not good for Mr. Uh, Mr. Balor. No. No, this is not good at all for no. him. No. But I mean, at least he's news, showing up on Raw every week. It's true. It's like Elias. He's in this big segments two weeks in a row, and then he's nowhere to be found. Yep, not even on the show like yep. this week. Um, but the good news is that this match at least went... Cl- it was more of a squash match yes. than the one against Dallas. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that at least that we had going for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he wins. Well, yeah, they Not beat surprised. up Finn before the match. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the match even starts, and they then, they jump him. I mean, I think we went to commercial, right, and come uh, back. Yeah, probably. And then Finn says, "Start the match," and then it's pretty quick after that. Oh yeah, he 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 uh, handedly took him down. Yeah, and he wins with the coup de gras. Yes, as usual. Mm-hmm. So uh, then we have a. I guess a backstage promo mm-hmm. where Kane says that uh, him and Braun are going to enter the abyss tonight and he will be emerging alone. And then he's going to face Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. It's so weird when people have these like angry, like sadistic thoughts. And then they add, I'm going to face someone at a, <laughs> at a pay-per-view. It's just like the complete opposite of what they're going for. I, I turned my, brain off when kane was on tv well yeah but it, it's just like i know that's what wrestling is but it's just funny yeah it's just weird kind of at like, lethal leap year <laughs> exactly it's so dumb well it was just weird they just kind of like we got nothing going oh you know what we got kane still he's on the roster yeah let's bring him in yeah let's have him do something and then after that we got seth rollins versus sheamus yes um so I don't know if we've talked about it, but Seamus apparently has, what, spinal stenosis, right? Uh, yes, that's what I hear. And when he went on his, well, little journey to Ireland, Ireland yeah, he uh, was actually seeing a specialist when mm-hmm. he was getting shots. Makes sense. In the neck, which is what you had alluded to. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently they've been protecting him on, like, house shows and stuff like that with, uh, you know, six-man tags and things like that. The, the Shield has been facing um, the, the bar and, and Samoa Joe a yeah, lot. Right. No protecting on, uh, I was gonna on this s- match. I was going to say, even last week, he, yeah. he was in a lot. It's just weird. He was rolling all over the place. I, I can't believe he does the... the uh, the flip with the guy with uh, Seth on his neck, yeah. and it's just crazy. I, I guess he feels all right. I don't know. I saw um, it was at least a thumbnail of a video, probably something from uh, <clears throat> the Wrestling Observer Radio mm. with Meltzer. Yeah, I listened um, to that, and it said something about him possibly retiring Retire, early. Yeah. Well, although he's kind of old now anyway, so it's yeah. not like it'd be very early, mm-hmm. but just earlier than he would originally have planned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you what, if he does have that, you know, he's really not showing it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Well, um, Seamus is one tough SOB, so. It's true. Um, but yeah, he goes for a bro kick. Um, Rollins ducks out. Oh, before we get to the yes, end. Yes, I know what you're going to say. So Seth Rollins should have a different finisher because he, this is twice now in a row where he's gone from the superplex into the, the Falcon, Falcon Arrow. Arrow beautiful like why not have that he he did it against sheamus yeah. it's not like he can only do it against smaller opponents mm-hmm. the only one he did it to cesaro last week yeah right? yeah so there's really no reason why he can't do it he could probably do it to joe i don't see why not he could do the falcon beautiful. arrow it's a it's a cool move it's yeah. a great transition because yeah. he goes to the superplex and then once they both land on the ground he just picks them back up yeah. and hits him with the falcon arrow exactly it should be a finisher because the superplex is kind of like revered as like a devastating move mm-hmm. to begin with yeah and then the falcon arrow generally always gets a near fall yeah 
So, um, so the two combination makes complete sense. Exactly. So anyway, uh, Sheamus goes for the bro kick. Seth ducks out of the way, um, grabs him in the in the power hug. Um, he goes for the knee. Cesaro ducks out of it. Mm-hmm. Not Cesaro. Sheamus Sam's ducks good. out of it, and then Seth does another uh, maneuver to get out of the way. Yep. Hugs him again, and then hits him with the knee. The oh no, hug. he hits him with the super kick, yeah. and then he hits him with the knee. The awkward hug, right? The offensive hug. Oh, the offensive hug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, so Seth Rollins wins in the match that we've seen many times. Over. Yeah, this was not a surprise. No. Um, actually, it's funny because this is the match that you kind of. This was the only up in the air match, though, on who was going to win. Yeah. Because the other two were obvious who mm-hmm. was going to win. So. Yeah. I, guess, I guess they wanted it to be in favor of the shield. So, Makes so they sense. Put him over. Makes sense. Then we go <laughs> backstage, and Renee is interviewing Dean. And these interviews are always good because Renee always has this look on her face, like I get to interview my husband. Yeah, um, she gets very excited. Yeah, but she basically asked Dean what his game plan against Joe was because he's never faced him before. And uh-huh. then Dean's kind of talking to himself, going you know back and forth about what he's going to do. And he's like, wait, wait, why am I telling you my game plan? I'm just going to go out there and do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he said that all I know is that I'm heated and I'm ready to take mm-hmm. on Joe. And yeah. then he just leaves. Disappears. Yep, that's it. And then Renee has this, you know, look, looking at him in the distance. Yeah. And then we get the fatal four-way match to determine the number one contender. Well, to the, face Drew Gulak. Yes. To find out the number one the contender. The last chance fatal four-way. Yes. So you guys lost and you get another shot. Mm-hmm. Um, with Drew Gulak on commentary, which was classic. Yes, he was great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. T. <laughs> Just the glaring look at Booker. <laughs> oh, he and his, diver- his diversion of questions were fantastic. He's, Every time Michael Cole asked... He's a so politician. I know, I know. It's it perfect. He fits the role to a T. Yeah. A Booker T. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Um, T. Yeah. But yeah, Michael Cole was like, so so what happens when you face your boss? What, what, what are your game plan or whatever like that? And he's like, that's an excellent question, Michael. And then he just goes on <laughs> to something else. <laughs> but what about this? Yeah. But uh, yeah, this was a good match, like you said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these these Cruiserweight matches on Raw have actually been pretty good. And they've been giving them time. Yeah. And well, I mean, that's been definitely the spotlight in 205 when they have the multi-man matches, like their Fatal 5-Way or whatever they had. Mm-hmm. They were always so good. Yeah. Um, Cedric Alexander has been really putting a lot of work in. Because he's been in, well, he's yeah. been in two of the Fatal 4-Ways. Mm-hmm. And he was probably the, the biggest spotlight of all of them. Um... And obviously Ali is very good at yeah. That Spanish fly is a really cool move. Yeah. I'm 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 kinda surprised well, Cedric won the match. Yes. With the lumbar check. Yeah, I, I think Gibari. they're just gonna continue what they were planning on with Swan just using a different face. Mm-hmm. But I kinda wish they changed it up and had like Nice or Davari win just so you would have that extra added now Enzo's really like, oh great, two Well now he has to yeah. face someone from the Zo train mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I still think that this works better. It's fine, but yeah. I would have just... I'm just glad it's Gulak instead of, like, Davari mm-hmm. or Nice. I think the Gulak is the, the well, one that yeah, works the best. It makes sense. He's just kind of skyrocketed his own mm-hmm. worth, basically. Yeah, he got himself over. Yep, he did. He, <laughs> he got himself over as a heel, and now they're going to make him face. I cannot with, wait. With edgy political uh, it's, agendas. It's such a terrible, terrible the no gimmick. fly zone. I mean, come on. <laughs> No I mean, it works. Like on 205 he, last week when uh, Noam Dar went to the top rope. Get off the top rope. <laughs> what are you thinking? Get down. He's like, I got to... Choo, choo. <laughs> or when Nice went over the top rope this week, and he's like, oh, he just he just flew. And he's like, no, he, he fell. <laughs> yeah. During their fatal four-way match, he yelled at him mm-hmm. when he went up to the, the yep. middle rope or whatever. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. He's really staying true to this. Yeah. And it, it, I'm glad they didn't give up on it, you yeah. know? Like, after he lost to uh, Ali in the uh, two out of three falls match, I figured they were just going to drop everything. Yeah. But I'm glad they stuck with it. Mm-hmm. And then he had a short feud with Tozawa with mm-hmm. the chance. And, yep. And there, he's holding on to everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Good so stuff. After the match, we have a backstage segment. This is when we were t- what we were talking yeah. about. And Gulak says that he's looking forward to his title shot. Mm-hmm. And then um, Enzo said that there's... Uh, 
there's only one word to describe your PowerPoint <laughs> presentations. And, and he's it, like, and then Drew goes, inspiring. <laughs> or do you say, in, no, he's oh, informative. informative. Yeah, informative. that's what it was. That's yes, what yes. it was. Yes. <laughs> and then the camera pans over. That's when Nia is yes, standing there. Yes, and then there. Nia Jack's there. She's like, oh, I like your PowerPoint yeah. presentation, And true. then Enzo's like, yeah, yeah. I was just telling him how informative they are. <laughs> and then Nia says, yeah, maybe we can talk when uh, you're alone. Yep. So. And that's, or when you're not busy, right? I think yeah. that's what she said. And then, uh, so yeah, that's uh, weird. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yep. So up next, we have the second of the announced matches mm-hmm. from earlier, where we have Cesaro versus Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental Championship. Match of the night. I'm a little surprised that this went on second of the three. I figured that this would be the third one. But then again, they kind of built up Joe versus Dean well, more yeah. for really no reason. It's not no. like it's not that the match was bad, but there's really there was nothing to the match. You know what I mean? The, the third match you're talking about, the Dean and yeah, that's what I said. Dean's all over the place. I know, but I'm just saying there was no there that it had the weakest story of the oh yeah of the three because but it went on last. Yeah, I guess. I yeah, that's that was the confusing part. Well, apparently, I don't know, but Raw apparently had one of the lowest second ra- hour ratings this past week, huh. which was surprising because it. Had, had all good matches good stuff in yeah. the second hour. This match was fantastic. Yeah. Well, this one started at like nine fifty. Yeah. So Into it was the, towards the end yeah. of the. But second it ended hour. probably quarter after ten a.m. Yeah, it was. It was a long yeah, match. They definitely gave this time, and Cesaro did what a heel should be doing. Working he worked the arm. The arm. No, yep. just working any body part. Well, yeah. Got to yeah. make some sort of story out of the match. <laughs> but yeah, he worked Roman's right arm mm-hmm. the entire time because yep. that's his. Uh, his strength is his Superman punch. Yep. They made sure to note that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Roman actually I sold it. I want to see him do it with the left arm. Yes. <laughs> he uh, he sold it pretty well yeah. throughout the match. Um, there was a point in time where uh, Roman likes to do the, the power bomb. Yeah, with a pickup. And well, yeah, because someone, someone's like holding onto his arm for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and he picks him up and hits the sit-out power bomb. Power bomb. And instead of going all the way up like he normally does, he got like three quarters, three of, the quarters of the way, maybe. Yeah. So he just couldn't hold on lo- yeah. that long. Well, and they were like, oh, my God, I can't believe he hit the power bomb with his arm. Yeah. So, uh, and then he was doing some roll-ups yeah. and just stuff you really don't see from Roman too yeah. much. Yeah, I think it. I think Cesaro was setting reins up for the neutralizer, and then that's where everything went downhill for Cesaro. Mm-hmm. I think that's where Reigns reversed it, right? Yeah. And then... Ended up hitting him with a spear for the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, he was caught off guard. Yeah. But yeah, no, this match went a while. Yeah. Um, and you know, anytime and Cesaro looked strong. Yeah, they, exactly. they made him look good. It's yeah. not like he looked there was, bad. There was no point in time where it looked like he was overpowered. Mm-mm. It looked like he had. He um, was in control for the majority yeah. of the match. And it looked like he was, you know, the I guess the better competitor. Which is funny because Reigns usually doesn't work on his defensive that much. No, like Braun and things on bigger matches, mm-hmm. but but um, usually it's if some if he's getting hit, it's because he made a mistake mm-hmm. or the other guy outsped him or whatever yeah. reason. Um, so yeah, it was a it's a good match. Yeah, good entertaining Definitely. solid match. Yeah, and it's nice to see something different because mm-hmm. uh, Roman doesn't really get involved with a lot of tag teams. Mm. Well, unless he's facing the club by himself. <laughs> True. Hey, we actually got to see the club this we week. We did. Huh? And we didn't see Elias, though. No. <laughs> he's uh, probably facing Kurt Hawkins on a main event. Most likely. Probably. So uh, we got a, we got backstage. <laughs> uh, Braun is just responding to what Kane said and said, yeah. I'm going to be the next Universal Champion. Mm-hmm. I want to face Brock. Yep. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was it. Mm-hmm. Nothing interesting going on nope. there. And then we got, well, we were supposed to get Asuka versus Alicia Fox. Yep. So Asuka's the first one out there. Mm -hmm. Then Alicia Fox music plays, and nobody comes out. Yep. It just plays. And Paige's music plays, because Absolution doesn't really have their own music, right? It's It's just just Paige's music. It's pretty much just Paige's music. So Absolution comes out, and they tell Asuka she's either got, she's got two options. She can either leave, or she can face them herself well it's get out of the way or they'll make her get out of the way whatever 
There's two different options. No, I'm just saying that those yeah. were the two options. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. You anyway. took the notes. I hope you knew. I'm just going off the memory, and that's not very good. It's true. I remember. <clears throat> yep. I remember your memory. My memory? Yes. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Asuka takes the three of them on. She handles her own a little bit against... Uh, Jeez, why do I keep forgetting her name? Sonia Deville. Yes. And uh, Mandy Rose. Yes. And then... Just remember, new PMS. Yeah, that's Gotta true. Gotta keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And Paige comes into the ring, and they are on the offensive. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the rest of the uh, women's roster comes out yes. to save. Even, Even Alexa Nia- Bliss. And Nia Jax. Yeah, well, Nia Jax is a little less surprising. <laughs> but Alexa Bliss, seeing as she's like, you know... Uh, I'm all in it for myself mm-hmm. kind of character right now. Yeah, but I mean, she did have that segment when they first came in and they beat her down. Yes, but I would think that she'd be afraid of them not wanting to. Now she's got backup. I guess that's true. She's not doing it herself. I don't know. I was just surprised. It, it, okay, it was surprising. I'm yeah, because like... usually they'll have the cowardly heel stay cowardly. Mm-hmm. But either way, um, they uh, they pretty much take out uh the three of them the three of them retreat yep um and uh so that's pretty much how they played nia Jax's music for yes some reason. for whatever reason yeah it's true mm-hmm. that part didn't make any sense but whatever yeah so we go backstage and kurt angles yelling at one of his lackeys <laughs> telling him the ring needs to be enforced tonight because yep. what happened last time when braun and kane went through the ring mm-hmm. which i think they then showed a video clip of it again Probably, right? Uh, or maybe that was earlier in the night. It was probably earlier in the night. I know we saw one. Yeah. And then his whiny little bastard comes in. <laughs> so Jason Jordan comes in, says he can't believe that Kurt didn't put him in a match. Sorry, dad. His dad didn't put him in a match with Joe. Yeah. Um, so Which Kurt, makes no sense because Joe already had a match. It's true. He did. He doesn't understand how this wrestling thing Since works. last week, Joe was supposed to face Reigns anyway, and yeah. then it ended up being... Reigns versus Jaden Jordan. Yeah. Um, But yeah, he basically says that Jason Jordan isn't ready for his match, and then Jason Jordan rebuttals with, but I've been in the ring with John Cena and Roman Reigns and this and that, and Kurt's like, just because you've been in the ring with them doesn't mean you won. It's true. You know, basically. And losing isn't good enough. Yes. So basically, once you earn it, you'll be given the match. Mm Mm-hmm. And Jason Jordan is not happy. And then he's, he's like, I'll, I'll see you later, Dad. I Or do I mean Kurt? And then he walks <laughs> away. Storyline's terrible. Yeah. It's so dumb. It's something. Yeah. All right, so... But, uh, I mean, he wow. he only got this... Well, no, I'm sorry. Never mind. What? Keep going. Okay. I was going to say he was only here there for this, and then I realized what happened next. Yes. All right, so up next, we got Dean versus Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm um joe comes out or after joe comes out he is followed shortly thereafter by the jason jordan um (laughs) he 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 does what joe did last week he grabs a steel chair and Mm -hmm. just sits on the ramp and he didn't sit quite as long as joe did though no he did not no because joe sat the whole match he was a good boy jason jordan got up like i don't know halfway through the match well i guess it was closer closer to the end it Um, wasn't a very long match though this this match they did not wow Fair enough. Yeah. So, anyway, he goes down to the ring, and then he's trying to, like, bother Joe, and, you know. And then it, I guess... Well, yeah, no, no, Gene, 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 Joe and Dean were outside the ring. Yeah. And then Jason Jordan walks down, and I think he threw Dean back in the ring. Oh, yeah, because he got, Dean got knocked down. Right. Um, and then... And then Joe... Oh, wait, no. Because I know Joe at one point, maybe Dean got thrown out by Joe, and then Jason Jordan was like... Oh, maybe he threw him back in, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Jason... Dean was down. Jason Jordan picked him up or mm-hmm. was just standing near him. Dean's like, go away. Yeah. And then that's when Joe jumps out with the suicide dive. And hits... and then, then Jason Jordan gets up, throws Dean back into that's the ring while Joe's okay. down. Mm-hmm. And then that's when uh, Joe and Jason Jordan go at it. Right. And then Joe kind of takes out Jason Jordan. Yeah, throws him down. Throws him into the... Did he throw him into the barricade, maybe? I think he threw him into the barricade, yeah. yes. Then he goes back in the ring, and him and Dean are going back and forth. Dean hit a move. Mm-hmm. Joe was down. Then Jason Jordan started to get in the ring, right? Yeah. And the referee got distracted. Yeah. 
So then Dean was like, what the hell? Because Joe was obviously pinned for longer than three seconds. Yes, and uh, Dean was not happy. Mm -hmm. So then what, Dean went... Did he go outside the ring with... I think he was just staring at him when he was, was just on the, the apron. Apron, okay. And that's when Joe gets him from behind, Binding I think, puts Koki the, in the clutch. clutch in. And that was, that was that. Dean passes out. Yes. So they're mm -hmm. protecting whoever faces Samoa Joe by having them pass out, I guess? They did that. They did it with Seth. They did it with Roman. I don't understand, though, because the concept really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because you're not tapping out. You're not giving up. Yeah, but I think they're thinking of this too literally. Because I would assume that getting knocked out is a little, you know, I don't know, whatever. I guess it means you're more tough because you're... Well, it's like when Austin was getting the sharpshooter and bleeding yeah, he, down yeah. the head, and he passed out from the pain rather than tapping in. I guess that's true. Yeah. It yeah. makes sense. It, it is a way well, of protecting. But a sleeper hold makes a little less sense than a... It's a rear naked choke hold. That's what it was called in, I think, No Mercy. Yeah. Or, WrestleMania 2000. Yeah, but either way, a sleeper hold isn't as threatening as, like, bleeding and, you know, your legs being ripped off. It's true. Okay. It's true. Whatever you say. Anyway. Yep. So go backstage, <laughs> and Dana Brooke is apparently the newest member of Titus Worldwide. Yeah, she is, like, the... Statistical and something st else? Statistical analysis and something else. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Paul Cruz is super excited about uh, yeah, it. Yeah, it was overly He's excited. like, oh, man, I wish I could do that. Yep. And, and then <laughs> Gallows and Anderson walk over, and they're like, you can do statistics? Because there was a point in time when she was with Gallows and Anderson when they were refuting with the New Day, I believe. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. I think they had a, a six-person tag with her, and I don't remember who they were facing. Yeah, it did happen. All right. Yeah. I believe you. I'm yeah. just, I cannot remember that. The <laughs> and all of a sudden, you hear Braun. Wait, no, no, no. You skipped the best part. Oh, yeah. He called them nerds. Yeah. Nerds. Yes. It's the best. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. We, that's good enough for me. Yeah. So then Braun comes barreling down. And they where, run away. They like, just both scatter. It's like a car coming down the road, and everybody's like, get out of the road. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah. It, uh, was, it was good. But yeah, that brings us to the main event. Braun Strowman against Kane for the number one contendership oh. to the Universal title. Uh, yeah. Uh, he kicked out of the choke slam. He kicked out of I, Kane's choke when slam. When was the last time a choke slam was actually a finishing you, maneuver? Um, for, for, I think it's Kane's finishing move, well, technically. I would think the tombstone would still be. But he never, he didn't do that. The Undertaker did. He oh, just used, used the it. tombstone. Yeah. There's a difference. I guess. So, anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a match. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, they, uh, went out to the outside. Um, Kane, like, charged at Braun. They were out in the crowd. He's, like, standing in the middle of, like, not, like, where the seats are, or not in the seats, but, like, in the area where the seats are. He runs through. They go through the barricade. They're on the ground. Ref counts to ten. Mm -hmm. Match gets thrown away. Yep. Um, they continue fighting. They both pick up <laughs> step, the top, of, step, the yeah. top of the steel steps, and then they clang them into each other. <laughs> it was bad. Um, and then Kane yeah. grabs a chair, and then... What was he? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he he's... uses it on Braun a few times. Yeah. But Braun eventually hulks up, and he... He took... Yeah, and then I think the crowd was chanting for tables. Yes. So Braun went under the ring, grabbed, grabbed the, table, the table, set it up in the ring. Mm -hmm. Then Kane had the momentum and was going to choke slam him through the table, but then Braun got out of it, hit him with a running power slam through the table. Yes. And that was that. That was the end of the show. Yep. So... Who knows what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen. It's probably going to be a triple threat. It is. That's the plan. Yeah. Which is dumb. So Kane can take the pin. Well, I was going to say, that's the only thing that Logical. makes sense. Yeah. It's either... You, well, well, we don't want Brock to pin Braun again. Yeah, but also at the same time, you could put the title on Braun. Yeah. And have just Kane take the pin. That throws... Well... You know what you can't do? Mm. Put the title on Kane. You cannot. Yeah. But... That would be bad. But... You never know. It's true. Anything's um, possible. I think Raw has the Elimination Chamber this year, uh -huh. so that's how they will determine their probably number one contender at uh, Royal Rum so uh, that, WrestleMania. So that means that Reigns is going to win that? Probably. Yeah. So is Unless this... we have a title. Well, yeah, we might have a title versus title. Um, That'd be dumb, but... Well, 
there are theories that I heard that he'll just theories. he'll win the universal title and then just drop the IC, IC title, title on his own and then have a tournament. Yeah, which would make sense. They need to do more tournaments. It's true, and you know, have legitimate reasons for well, them. Well, all right. So we got the Royal Rumble to gain a number Where one do contender. You know SmackDown, someone on SmackDown is going to win. Yeah, that. it's going to be either Shinsuke, John Cena, or Randy Orton again. John Cena would make sense, but there's also a good chance it's Shinsuke to have Shinsuke AJ. Well, yeah, I see either Shinsuke AJ, Orton AJ, or Cena, Cena Mahal. If Mahal uh, takes it back, up. I don't like that idea. I don't either, but... <laughs> so, Royal Rumble crowns a number one contender for WrestleMania. Uh-huh. You should have a tournament after WrestleMania to get a championship match at SummerSlam. Kind of like the G1 they do in Japan, where, you know... Yeah, I mean, there's, granted, it's there's really that, no reason why... It, d- that was like the King of the Ring. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, original, that's what they should do. That was the original just, plan. Was, yeah, just make, just make, uh, like I said, a network special. Have mm-hmm. the whole thing in two nights or one night. And then you have a, mm-hmm. a number one contender trip for the the main event for SummerSlam. Yeah, you could sense. even do it in in like July. Doesn't matter when you do it. Nope. Or what? you could just have it a dual branded pay per view, like Money in the Bank. It's true, but I think they they're really cutting down on pay per views. Well, yeah, exactly. So you so, don't have to have two that month. You just have one. Like Money in the Bank is going to be dual branded. That's now. true. And the King of the Ring was always seen as like a big deal. It was. I liked it. Yeah, I like. It's a good. It's a good idea. But, you know, they don't like good ideas. No. So, on that note, yes, this was our Raw review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.